Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Human Resources Certificate, Learning and Development Certificate, and the HR Certification Exam Prep Program. My name is Margaret Rossi. I'm the Program Director for these programs, among some others, at uh, the School of Professional Studies at UNC Charlotte. So welcome. We're so delighted to have you here. There's a lot of information I want to share with you about these three programs this evening in this one short hour that we have together. So let me just go through a few housekeeping rules. Your mic and your audio have been disabled uh, due to the volume of people in this session. And I'm sure I'm gonna have more people uh, arrive as I'm uh, starting this program. So if you would like to communicate by asking a question, please use your chat box. And there is a chat button either at the bottom of the screen or at the top of the screen, depending on how you have Zoom set up. And uh, you can go into chat and you have the availability of typing in a question. Uh, there'll also be a question and answer period in uh, two points in this uh, presentation. So thank you so much. Just wanted you to be aware about that. Um, also, you heard that this was being recorded. Uh, we will be tomorrow sending you uh, a copy of this recording so you can have it as reference, along with uh, supplemental resources. So today you received six different handouts, mostly class schedules about the programs that we're going to be talking about. You received a human resources schedule for both fall and spring a learning and development schedule for both fall and spring, an HR exam prep fall and spring schedule, and then several career sheets on uh, individuals in these occupations that I'll share with you uh, that uh, were taken from the Department of Labor. Um, so I wanted you just to have an idea. We sent them to you, but we'll also send them tomorrow as well, along with the recording. I am accompanied by my uh, producer and my colleague, Mr. Michael Utzman. So if you have any questions as well, you can put it in chat. Uh, Michael, uh, due to all the people that are in this session, uh, will flag me uh, if there are questions, just in case I miss any. And once again, even at the end of this, uh, I'm hoping to be open to any questions you may have. So with that said, let's take a look at what I'm going to cover. First of all, I'm going to spend one minute on the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, just to give you an idea of who we are, and then how my department fits into uh, the university. We are the University of North Carolina at Charlotte School of Professional Studies, continuing education, and want to let you know that the programs that we're discussing um, are offered by uh, the School of Professional Studies. So just want to give you an idea. Then we're going to start off with an overview of the human resources courses and the learning and development courses from the Human Resources and the Learning and Development Certificate programs. So I'm gonna start off with those two certificate programs and we're gonna look at a big picture overview first and then drill down into the certificate requirements and the Human Resources and Learning and Development course content. We're then going to finish up the seminar with the third uh, human resource offering that we have available, and that is the Human Resources Certification Exam Prep Program. And so uh, we will go through that format. So what I'm planning to do is to talk about these three programs, go over all the specifics, the costs, what uh, learning modality this is offered in, how often is this program offered, where is this program offered if it is in person, and many of the other specifics to make sure uh, that you get all of your questions answered. I will then end with how do you register uh, for any of these programs or even just an individual course, and uh, we'll talk about that. 
So before I move forward, if you take a look at this agenda, is there anything you need to have that I may not be covering, or you have a question of something you need about these three programs uh, that I may not have mentioned. Can you put it in the chat, please? And I will look, uh, and you may not have a question yet. And if you have questions after you process all this, I will give you my direct uh, number, phone number, as well as email near the end of this session. And we will, uh, go over um, that with you. So you have that reference material. So I'm looking at chat and I don't see, when you click the chat button, you choose to everyone and then you can put your message in. So I'm looking just to see if anybody has anything else uh, that you would like added to the agenda. And I'm not seeing anything. Okay, well, if there is any uh, additional uh, item, please let me know. I'll be happy to um, answer that for you. Um, I did get a question about the School of Professional Studies. Uh, we have just uh, changed our name uh, to the School of Professional Studies, and uh, we're going to be going through more of that. Um, we're quite excited about it. Continuing Ed is just one piece um, of the School of Professional Studies. We have Distance Ed as part of this, and our Teaching and Learning Connection are part of this. And it is expanded to help uh, working professionals uh, with their uh, career needs. And so I'm looking forward to expanding on that as well. As you can see, I have on this screen uh, two highlighted words. Throughout any occupation, there is a list of uh, new terminology as well as acronyms. And in our short hour together, uh, I'll probably go through 10 acronyms and a few terms that some of you may be familiar with and some of you will not. And so just to make sure we're all on the same playing field, when I am looking at the word certificate, as in our human resources certificate or our learning and development certificate. And when I look at the word certification in terms of an HR certification, a project management certification, a hospitality certification, they are two different things and wanna make sure that I distinguish between the two. So when we see certificate, it is a, series of courses surrounding a body of knowledge where you're going to learn tools and resources where you can apply in the workplace. So when you take a human resources certificate, you're going to learn a series of uh, tools over the course of uh, a number of courses, and you're going to be able to receive a certificate from UNC Charlotte, a School of Professional Studies, that you have achieved this certificate. There are no standardized tests you have to take, but I will be going through the specifics of that certificate program shortly. When you see certification, when somebody says, I am certified on a resume, that usually means two things. Can anyone share with me in the chat box what one of those things may be? I'm just looking to see. Passing a certification exam. Another person said passing an exam. In a specialized field and, and the answers are coming in and that is absolutely correct. When somebody says they are certified, it typically means that they passed a national exam by a governing body that created that credential. And with that said, they are uh, they need to be eligible 
in order to take that national exam. So this is not an exam by UNC Charlotte, it's an exam by a governing body. And in order to be eligible, you typically have to have years of experience in that field. And they're quite specific of how many years that would be. And in some certifications, they also have another caveat where you have to take so many courses in a particular field. But for the most part, when you are looking at HR certifications, and we're going to talk about four of them, and when you are referring to project management certifications or hospitality certifications, it means you have to have so many years of experience in the field, you must apply to take a national exam by the governing body that created that certification. So with that said, as part of my agenda, I am going to talk about the HR certification exam prep program where we prepare individuals for four certifications. And someone just mentioned in the chat box that they meant instead of the School of Professional Studies, they meant the SPHR, what does that stand for? And I'm gonna go through all these acronyms because you're not alone. Many people see acronyms in a particular field such as just even on this slide, what is HRCI? What is PHR, SPHR, SHRM, CP, SCP? And that's just on slide two. <laughs> so what I wanna share with you is the governing bodies that we're gonna be talking about is HRCI and SHRM. HRCI stands for Human Resources Certification Institute. And they created a number of certifications in HR but two of which we're gonna talk about. One is called Professional and Human Resources, PHR, and another is called SPHR, a Senior Professional in Human Resources. SHRM, the Society for Human Resource Management, over the last five years also created several credentials, several certifications. One is called CP for Certified Professional, and another is called SCP, Senior Certified Professional. So you can see the PHR, Professional and Human Resources, and the CP, Certified Professional, are similar. The Senior Professional and Human Resources and the Senior Certified Professional are similar. So we're gonna talk about both of those and how our exam prep program prepares you for that. But at least we're on the same playing field. We understand what some of that terminology means. So I am curious, can you go back to that chat box, please? And let me know if any of you in this session are certified. There's a reason why I'm asking that because I'm going to share some information with you shortly, but I'm just curious. I'm getting a lot of individuals that aren't currently certified. Maybe they're joining this information session because they're curious at possibly if they are eligible to be certified. Um, not at this time, okay, and that is a goal. Okay, a lot of people are preparing. They, they may be, it is part of their career goals. So thank you so much for that. Um, looking forward to bringing up why I asked that question shortly. Okay, let's start with just a quick overview. This is the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Uh, just wanted to give you some background on uh, our university. Uh, we are the largest university in the Charlotte region. We are the second largest in the state. Uh, we were founded in 1946, and it was uh, created to help serve the World War II veterans coming back from the war. Uh, in 1965, we became the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, and currently we have eight colleges, 171 bachelor degree programs, uh, 65 master's programs, 24 doctoral degree programs, and we have 30,000 plus students, uh, so we're quite proud of that. Where do we fit in uh, continuing education? We specialize in helping individuals and employers achieve their personal and organizational goals. 
And so how we do this is we offer short courses, one and two day courses for professional development. We have certificate programs like the two I'm gonna spend a lot of time on, the HR program, the learning and development program. And we have approximately 30 certificate programs. We have recertification courses is one of the reasons why I asked you, do I have anyone that's certified currently that is in this session? Because whenever you get certified, I don't care what field you're in, if you take all that time, that painstaking process to go through and get certified and be so proud of it and get an acronym to put on your signature block, in your resume, in LinkedIn, you don't have it forever. You only have certifications typically worldwide for most. There's a few that go away from this, but most it's only good for three years. So you have to be diligent at getting recertified. And trust me, there isn't anyone in this session and no one I have ever talked to that wants to ever take the tests again. They wanna get recertified going through different avenues. And I'm gonna bring that in later on in the session. So I have courses that you can take and get recertified by earning professional credit that is approved by HRCI and SHRM if you are certified with uh, those credentials. I also have exam prep program courses, one of which we'll talk about in tonight's session, and that's the HR certification exam prep program. And then we also have a department that will uh, actually customize a training solution for your organization, bring your business culture in only for your employees. So thank you for listening to a little bit about what we do because we're so proud of it. We run courses six days a week here uh, in every learning modality. So here we are, let's talk strictly about HR and learning and development certificate program courses first. Let me show you the commonality between the courses and then we'll delve into the course content. All human resources and learning and development courses are very flexible. You can take them individually or you can work towards a certificate. The course length, Every course is seven instructional hours. We have courses that are offered in the day, 8.30 to 4.30. And we don't, we really don't look at lunches or breaks. We only look at the instructional hours and of professional development. And it is a seven hour program. Evening courses are offered on Tuesday and Thursday evenings, 6 to 9.30. So three and a half hours each night. If it is a day course, it is offered during the week, not on the weekend. The registration fee is $275, oh, excuse me, $275 for the individual course. That's without any discounts. It will include all of your course materials for each and every class. And some of these may include assessments and, and things of that nature. There may be 20 additional resources, but you will absolutely have your course materials as part of the registration fee. We do have discounts available. And I'd like you to know that right off the bat. If it's an individual course you're taking uh, from the human resources or the learning and development uh, class schedule, we have an early bird discount. If you register two weeks prior to the course start date, you get 5% off. That would be $261. If you decide to do the whole certificate, which is 90% of my clients, when they take the series of courses, they are looking at the whole certificate. And if you take the whole certificate and you register for all of the courses, you don't know how many there are yet, but if you take all the courses and register for all the courses at once, you get 15% discount. It's called the bundle discount. We didn't always have it. 
but we're excited to have it available. And that would bring it down to approximately $234 a course. In addition, if you are a member of two associations, one of which I've already mentioned, one is brand new, another acronym. If you are a member of ATD, the Association for Talent Development, you would be able to get 15% discount off of any of the courses in these two programs. If you are a member of the Society for Human Resource Management, you can get 15% discount. The reason why I'm mentioning this is we honor those that continue to work at their craft. ATD, I'm a member of all these associations, ATD has a national chapter and a local chapter. It is mostly made up of some HR professionals, but mostly learning and development professionals. Those that are trainers, instructional designers, training managers, uh, training directors, training coordinators, anyone in the space of learning and development. SHRM, the Society of Human Resource Management, is made up of HR professionals. And so I always tell my clients, whenever you are looking at belonging to a particular occupation, if you're already in it, phenomenal. If you are planning to make a career change and get into it, this is one of the most important things one can do is to join an association and mingle with those that are in the field. But association fees are very expensive. And I've been in, in learning and development 39 years. And in 39 years, I belong to six organizations, but they've always been in that $400 price range. And that always makes it difficult. Um, sometimes you can get a break if you are a student, uh, but I just wanna share with you, if you have to make a choice between the national organization or the local chapter, I always choose the local chapter. So I can go to a local meeting and meet individuals in my community that are currently working in that field. So we honor that and give you 15% discount. I also wanna say that if anyone is an alumni of UNC Charlotte, uh, the alumni office does offer a, what is called an alumni perk, a 10% discount. Now, as, as much as I wish that you can bundle all these together, um, that is not allowed. You have to pick one and, uh, and we will honor it. And I do wanna add one more. It is one that a lot of companies may be aware of, uh, but for anybody that is in this meeting tonight, I want you to be aware of it. If three or more individuals from your company wants to register, once again, three or more at once in, in a course or a series of courses, uh, we will honor 15% discount. So thought that I would let you know, so we are looking at the Human Resources and Learning and Development Certificate Program. There's a lot of courses in each. Each one is seven instructional hours, if you have a day program, it's, it's offered uh, in the hours that you see here. If it is an evening program, it's two nights in the same week. There are courses that are offered online and we use the Zoom platform and you will get very comfortable with it. I realize over these uh, last uh, year and a half, uh, most of us have used a uh, video platform tool, uh, whether it's WebEx, Zoom, um, Teams, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, but Zoom is the one that we use as a university. And if it is an in-person class, uh, some of you uh, may not be aware, but we are housed in the Dubois Center at UNC Charlotte Center City. So that is uptown at 9th Street and North Brevard. We have a phenomenal building. You can see it in the corner. The architect built it about 10 years ago, and it was designed to look like a stack of books. 
I absolutely love our building. It's just awesome. So if you ever have that opportunity to come here and take a class, uh, we are at a perfect location and there is parking all around the building. Uh, uh, which you would need as an extra cost uh, to pay for. Uh, there literally is parking right next to the building, across from the front door, and um, uh, to be honest with you, all around our building. Uh, and we don't own our own parking lot, but we have a preferred uh, parking lots all around our unit, and we have no issues there. So I want you to uh, be aware of that. Uh, if you do come to an in-person class at UNC Charlotte's Center City Building, may I assure you that we have uh, really all the safety standards in place. Obviously, as many of you know, this is a fluid situation and we are up to speed on being in accordance with state and, uh, with, and system uh, policies along with university policies. But what I can tell you right now is everyone is expected to wear a, a face covering. So that is a mask mandate at UNC Charlotte's in-person classes. So whenever you're indoors, despite um, social distancing, it doesn't matter. Um, instructors, staff, and uh, students will all be wearing masks. And we have extensive cleaning practices in place in between each and every class. Uh, you can see some of my classes that I ran um, all through COVID. So uh, we, we had some uh, wonderful classes uh, in person. So here's another thing I wanna share with you about learning and development and human resources courses. Another commonality. We offer professional credit for every one of those courses that we're about to delve into. Because we are a state institution, UNC Charlotte, we offer continuing education units for every course. So that's a given. We are also pre-approved. Every one of the courses I'm about to share with you is pre-approved by Human Resource Certification Institute, as well as SHRM, for specialized professional credit. So if I did have anybody that was certified, that was in this meeting tonight, they are interested in taking my HR programs or learning and development programs because every one of those courses is going to give them seven credits. And you're going to learn soon, you have to earn a lot of credit to stay certified. And so you want to have your plan in place. And we make sure that we offer these relevant uh, in-tune courses that meet industry demands uh, and get it approved by HRCI and CHIRM so you can stay certified. Okay, you know about ATD, the Association for Talent Development. I told you that's the learning space. That's what, those are all my trainers and my instructional designers and my training managers. Well, ATD has a certification institute and they have their own certifications. And there may be people in this meeting tonight that is a certified learning and development professional. Here's two more acronyms for you. APTD, the Associate Professional in Talent Development and CPTD, the Certified Professional in Talent Development. These are individuals that have had years of experience. They also had to do a work project and they also took a national exam to get these certifications. But just like my HR certified professionals, they have to keep recertified and make sure that they stay abreast of the new uh, uh, trends in their industry. And so we are pre-approved to offer specialized credit from ATD for the learning and development certificate program. Okay. You have an idea of the big picture overview of these seven hour courses. Now, what does it take to achieve your learning and development certificate or your human resources certificate? And so what I want you to know is there's no prerequisites to get into either of those programs. 
So I may have truly a lot of varying levels of experience of people in this meeting tonight. And what I want you to know is if you're brand new and you wanna get into HR or learning and development, absolutely no prerequisites, you can get right in. Uh, the same thing for, uh, once again, HR or L&D. But what I do want to share with you is if you are planning to take online, live online classes with me uh, at UNC Charlotte, I did put in that there is a requirement. You do, and I'm sure that all of you in this meeting are very aware of this process that you had to go through over the last year and a half just to communicate with your clients, um, your employees. Uh, you really need to have a good internet connection and you need to have a webcam. Just like when you're in a real class and we see your face and you're engaging because these are not lectures. This is extremely interactive. And we, we really do require your webcam turned on and we're watching you. Um, so with that said, I just thought I'd make mention of it. Uh, and I'm sure most of you have this mastered um, because no one wants um, to have a poor internet connection and no one wants to not be able to engage when you're in a live virtual class. It makes engagement more difficult. Uh, what is recommended, excuse me, what is required is in order to achieve the certificate in HR or L&D, you have to take all 10 courses that we're about to go over shortly. So there are 10 courses to achieve the HR certificate, and there are 10 courses to achieve the learning and development certificate. You must be in full attendance of all 10 courses. Recordings don't take the place of online classes. You must be there in person, live, and you must be in attendance. There are no exams to take. We are going to give you um, all kinds of assessments and things of that nature to show the application. You're gonna be applying what you learn, uh, but you're not gonna to have to take a national exam. So full attendance, absolutely key in order to get credit for taking the courses. We tell our students it would be advisable to do this within two semesters. Truly all of my clients, when they take an HR certificate program or a learning and development certificate program, they are looking at taking it all within the year. Most wanna take it all in one semester and others split it up between two semesters. So that's why I put two semesters. 99% of my students do it that way. <clears throat> if I have a special situation where someone says, Margaret, you know, there's no way I can graduate within two, I may have to take one more course the next semester. I'll work with you. But that's advisable because in one year, things could change. I make sure that our individual courses are taught by field experts, are taught by individuals that do this every day and is approved by an advisory board full of HR and learning and development officers who know that this is relevant information. And I don't have information in there that's not. So uh, if by chance something changes in the industry, we're gonna add it to the program and, and change the program. So it's advisable uh, to graduate within two semesters. In your last class, if we are in person, you will receive your certificate from UNC Charlotte that you have completed your 70 hour program. Remember, every course is seven instructional hours and there are 10 of them. If it is an online program, you will get it within the week after your last class. And we will mail you a certificate with the gold seal. So now let's talk about the Human Resources Certificate Program. Before I do, before I really delve into it, um, do I have any questions? Michael, is there any questions? We are good to go. Wonderful. 
Okay. We will um, stop for a moment when I finished with the course content for the HR and the learning and development. So this HR program, truly we're looking at a program that is based on the Human Resource Certification Institute body of knowledge, as well as the SHRM competency model. So we are looking at models over the last 25 years we've been running this program, twice a year, and it is modeling the competencies of an HR professional. So even 25 years ago, there were certain competencies that we taught that is still in the program today. For an example, being compliant with labor and employment laws. We need to know our legal rights, our company's legal rights, our employees' legal rights. And so that hasn't gone away in 25 years. So truly, we are looking at HR competencies. We are, this program is preparing you for the day-to-day -day operations of an HR generalist, someone who is managing HR functions. Some of these functions is recruiting, hiring uh, talent, uh, engaging uh, and retaining talent, uh, working with compensation and employee benefits, uh, working with payroll, working with um, calculating overtime, uh, coaching, learning and development actually falls under the HR branch in many corporations employee performance management plans. So all of these are HR functions and it's based on the body of knowledge for HR professionals. Now, I just wanna share with you that I shared today uh, a handout from the Department of Labor Occupational Handbook. So for any of you that are investigating, if you're still in the investigation phase of what, where should I um, invest my future, my career, and you're investigating HR, I always tell my students to start off with investigating what the scope of work is through Department of Labor. They have an occupational handbook. You type in HR specialist, for instance, and a 40 page overview will come aboard of the pay scale, uh, the work environment, uh, the career outlook, um, what is the realistic picture for people looking at this field, what are the competencies that would help you be successful. Always check that. Typically, they used to, the feds used to update that every two years. Because of COVID, they've been updating it every four months. So what I gave you was just updated. It was either April or June of 2021. So I'm giving you a good picture. And the good picture is it's on a definitely an upward trajectory. Uh, these people are in demand and it will be all the way through 2029. So it's a wonderful field to get into. So I wanted you to be aware of that. So now let's talk about, these are the 10 courses. So I also gave you the HR schedule, as I mentioned early in this uh, information session. I offer these 10 courses in the fall and in the spring. For the Human Resources Certificate Program, all of these courses are offered in person and virtually. If you want a combination, you will be taking all the online courses and that would be half in the fall, half in the spring. And if you want all in person, let's say, then you would do that in the fall and the spring. If you want to take it all in one semester, it's a mixture of virtual and online. But I do have an option if all you want is one or the other. You, the, the handout that I gave you about the class schedule has hyperlinks to take you right to the website to learn more in depth about each course. 
But just a quick five second overview, Essentials of Human Resource Management is not an elementary course. It is a course that's gonna go through all the major functions of an HR uh, competency model that you have to be aware of. And so you're gonna be going through a little bit of labor and employment law, a little bit about employee, employee uh, performance management uh, plans, uh, a, a little bit about um, the governing bodies that uh, control and mandate all of the competencies. So it's a very important course to learn all of the terminology and, and get a big picture overview of all of these competencies and functions that you're going to be working with. Then we're going to delve in we're going to have a seven hour course on employee performance management, where you're going to learn about how to create employee uh, performance plans. And also uh, very important in this course, how do you communicate and discuss job performance with employees? How do you uh, perform um, a, a performance review or a job review? Labor and employment law, really critical. Uh, how we're going to be compliant with all the labor laws. How are we gonna protect our employees? How are we going to protect us from being sued? Uh, you need to know your legal pitfalls. Um, I want you to be aware that we also have to know um, how do you calculate um, overtime correctly? You don't wanna send any red flags uh, and um, definitely not be compliant with these laws. Recruitment and selection, you know, how to create recruiter competencies. Um, how do you create performance-based job descriptions? How do you create a talent pipeline? And so you're going to go through all of that. And I have to say this is very, very important because I will have people that uh, will achieve a certificate. They may not have a lot of experience in HR, but this is one of the first jobs that they will get is in recruiting. Um, so I, I want uh, to put some emphasis on that. Total rewards is employee compensation and benefits. And so you're gonna go over compensation and benefits programs, uh, trends in comp and benefits. Uh, you're gonna look at a whole total compensation and rewards program. Uh, and how to be compliant. And this is where you do learn how to calculate overtime, which is very important. Fostering employee engagement. I mean, how are you gonna retain your employees? How are you gonna attract new talent? This is so important, especially now that we're in the middle of this pandemic. Um, the, uh, I have to be honest with you. I mean, this class sold out uh, last year alone. I, I mean, I had 50 people and people on waiting lists for this course uh, because um, the job market has a, a lot of challenges right now. So uh, you're going to learn about attracting new talent, how to retain and engage the talent you do have. And, um, you know, how you're going to put those organizational and managerial engagement drivers in place and, and impact your company culture. So it's very, very important. Now you see generational and cultural impact to business, change management and organization development and coaching for success. Those are three mandatory courses in the learning and development program as well. So I want you to be aware um, there's some crossover there. The generational and cultural impact to business you can imagine it is working with all the generations, an overview of all the generations in the workplace. We have five to six right now in the workplace at any given time. And you're gonna learn strategies and tactics of how to work with these different generations and, and uh, communication benefits. Uh, and we also need to talk about your cultural intelligence and the ability to relate and work across cultures and how to develop it in the workplace. And we have all kinds of assessments there that will help you with. Change management and organization development, I wish I can make mandatory for every single solitary student that takes a, a course within my School of Professional Studies because we are all navigating change. And uh, so we're gonna talk about the fundamentals of change management. You're going to learn why change initiatives fail. 
And you're going to look at change management models that work and how to implement them. And you're going to learn about organization development tools, intervention tools uh, to help you manage your change. Coaching for success, you're going to learn all about, you know, first of all, what is coaching? Uh, people really may not be sure of what coaching is. They may think it's teaching, facilitating. And you're going to learn all about questioning skills and engaging the right people throughout the coaching process, <clears throat> excuse me, and so on. Emotional intelligence, the critical skill for leadership, is very, very important. Uh, you're going to learn how to employ emotional intelligence within your management style. And this is so important for all my, even my learning and development students, even though this isn't mandatory for them. So with that said, those are 10 courses in human resources. Learning and development certificate program. I'm going to tell you about those 10 courses in just a second. But what I want you to know about the learning and development program is that this is based on ATD. It used to be called the competency model. Anybody in learning and development who wanted to be a successful learning and development professional looked at the competency model. And my program uh, approximately 22 years ago was modeled after that. This year in 2021, actually, yes, it was 2021 in January, they came up with the capability model. And so what I want you to know is we are looking at learning and development competencies that you need uh, to be successful in, in order to be successful in this occupation. Um, this is also based on a variety of other models. I just want to mention Addy for a minute. A stands for, you could see it there, ADDIE, A, D, D, I, E. A for analysis, D for development, D for design, I for implementation, E for evaluation. You're gonna learn how to analyze the needs of your client. If somebody came in and said, hey, listen, we're having a problem in this department. Uh, I think we need a conflict resolution class. If you just become an order taker, what's gonna happen is the learning and development unit is not gonna be valued. And you may not even help the company's objectives because that course may not have been needed. So you have to learn how to do a business case for any class that you, you offer. You're gonna to have to learn how to analyze the needs, how to develop and design your course, and that is based on how you're going to deliver it. That's called implementation. Is it online or in person? And then you need to evaluate the success. And there's various ways you do that. So we're going to talk about the ADDI instructional model as well. The 10 courses seen here um, is what is mandatory. Now, I have to say, if you count these, there's actually 11. So I have 11 options for you, but 10, but 10 are required, and you can choose those 10. Essentials of training delivery, we're going to talk about adult learning models. We're going to talk about the structure and content of delivery. We're going to talk about you know, managing face-to-face -face and virtual classrooms and the evaluation process. Learning needs analysis is from the ADDI model. You're going to talk all about you know, what is Addy? What is the SAM model? How do you go through this model? And we're going to give you all these tools to help you do an analysis and apply it in real world. Instructional design. How are you going to design and develop the two Ds? How are you going to design and develop your training class? You're going to learn um, all kinds of templates that you can use in designing. You're going to plan out every exercise, every, every word that you're going to share and how that's developed. And you're going to time it out so it, it runs smoothly. Presentation and facilitation skills are two separate things. So presentation skills, 
we're going to make you your better authentic self. You know, there isn't a person in this meeting that wants any instructor or presenter to fail, right? There are, every, there are cheerleaders. They want you to shine up there and share the information confidently. And there's all kinds of strategies to be able to be a better presenter. And you don't want to do anything authentic. Like I'm not a big jokester. So you you may not see me saying all these jokes, but for some people, it may work beautifully. Uh, so with all that said, we do talk about presentation tactics, but we're also going to talk about facilitation. It's extremely important in corporate and in many um, businesses where you need to be the neutral leader and no facilitation skills to get the group to come up with the solution. And so we're going to be sharing all kinds of tools with you. Managing learning programs. You're going to learn all about how to make a business case for your learning department. Driving learning results with data. Those two kind of tie in because do you know what to measure in learning and development? If you are in this meeting and you are a learning and development leader, what are you measuring? How do you know your learning and development classes are successful? And so I want you to realize that there are certain metrics you can put in place, you can measure, and you can have real reporting for your C-suite especially uh, to show how training is helping the company's goals. Fundamentals of virtual training. Now we had in there this in here before the pandemic and it was always popular and now even more so. This is another one that sold completely out. I had to actually offer it twice uh, uh, last year. We are not going to teach you how to use Zoom, how to use Microsoft Teams, how to use WebEx, but what we're teaching you is what are the trends and how do you conduct a class virtually? And what are all the best practices that you need to be successful in teaching virtually? Technology tools for the L&D professional, that's brand new, about a year old. We love it. This is to help you in any course, in person or virtual, as an instructor and a leader to bring in other tools that you can use to engage the audience. So we have all kinds of fabulous websites we bring you to and special things we have you download to virtually poll you and uh, virtually have you do, use um, electronic post-it notes and things of that nature to really have an impact in your class. Okay, and then uh, the last three are the ones I just shared with you. So what I wanted to say is I talked about, excuse me for one second, I'm so sorry. Pardon me, a little tickle in my throat. I just talked about two certificate programs. And what I wanted you to know is I have many, many students that take both, and sometimes at the same time. So what I wanted you to know, just in case any of you in this session are interested in that, if you take a program with the 10 courses, the second program, you don't have to take those last three, the three that are on this slide, because you've already taken them in the previous certificate program. So basically we're waiving three programs or three courses, excuse me. So what I wanna ask you before I go over the exam prep program, which is one slide, what I wanna go over with you is, you know, do you have any questions just about the HR and the learning and development certificate classes. Okay, we're gonna talk about the certificate.
When I see, can you still get the 15% discount in that case? I'm assuming if you do multiple certificates. The second certificate, you don't because they're already waiving three classes. So they don't give you that 15% bundle discount because they already took three out. Is this a good program for a person who has a career in social services um, or has a BSW background that is trying to segue into human resources? I'm not sure what BSW means, but as far as social services, I've had many individuals who have been in the social services realm and went into HR. There are many transferable skills and a lot of the information um, you are already doing a lot of a lot of those skill sets and competencies you 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 possess someone said how can you take both classes at the same time in the evenings because all of these classes have different dates so people are able to take if if they schedule it uh they can take classes Tuesday, Thursday, and maybe the next week is a learning and development class, and one week is an HR class. Um, could any of these classes be taken on other campuses? No, uh, this is offered by our continuing education department. And so when we have an in-person class, uh, it is here, as I mentioned earlier in the slides, um, the in-person classes are here. But remember, in the HR world, you can do all of them um, online. It says, do you see it to be better or more competitive than getting a master's in human resources? Very interesting question. Um, typically that question comes after the certification slide that I'm about to show you. Uh, when someone takes a certificate, it means that you have gone through 70, a 70 hour program on all of the HR competencies. And uh, you put that program on your resume, uh, obviously, and the date that you graduated. And it is extremely uh, competitive. Obviously, it, um, I can't compare it to a master's program of two years in HR, but I can tell you this, a certificate program in HR, it is all about application. When you learn about all these theories, uh, competency models and tools, you're gonna be able to apply it immediately. It is less theory and all about application. And that is one of the greatest values of a certificate program. I am going to, um, I'm going to talk about next, if you don't mind, the actual certification program. So very quickly, you can read this. I put this in for you to have as an extra. I already shared this at the very beginning of our info session, but I'm about to show you our exam prep program. And I just wanted to lay it out there. We have the Human Resource Certification Institute certifications, and these are only a few of them. And I also wanted to just share with you wherever you see a little I, that means international. That means international. Uh, because I do have a lot of people from out of the country take some of my programs and they are planning to work out of the country and they have a, uh, an international or global uh, HR experience. And so they want their exam in, in that. But anyway, we're going to concentrate on PHR and SPHR and under SHRM, the CP and SCP. And this is for any of you that was certified already, but I just want to keep it in here that if by chance anyone is currently certified, you have to, in three years, get recertified. And that would mean a series of things. You can take webinars and you can do all these things, or you can take continuing education classes and get a chunk of those credits towards your recertification. In January of this year, HRCI added that you must also take one ethics credit. So I thought I'd put it in for your reference. 
So let's talk about our exam prep program before we end this uh, session. This is a program formatted differently than the other two. That's why I wanted to keep it separate. This program prepares you for the two certifications from HRCI and the two certifications from SHRM. This program meets on Monday evenings in 12 consecutive Mondays. So you are going to meet for 36 hours, 6 to 9 p.m. on Monday nights. We have a fall opening. It starts three weeks from this past Monday. It starts on September 13th and it goes to November 29th. I am half full. Um, so we do have some openings left. And this uh, program is gonna be a 12 week program, as you can see, 36 hours. The spring option starts in February and ends in May. What I want you to be aware of is even though this says 36 hours, for those of you investigating certification, I mean, this really goes for any of the certifications that I manage. When you are looking at certification, obviously you have to be eligible. And so you want to go to hrci.org or SHRM.org, depending on which certification you're looking at. And you want to be able to make sure you're eligible. Do you have that number of years of experience? You know, seven, seven years ago, um, they never looked at your education. They only looked at your years of experience in HR, and they demanded a lot in order to take a certification exam. Seven years ago, they changed it. And they said, we'll also look at your education. So if you have a master's, for instance, it doesn't matter if it's in HR or not, but if you have a master's degree, then you can have less years of experience in HR. If you have a bachelor's degree, you know, less years of experience in HR in order to be eligible to take the exam. So definitely do your due diligence. Go to hrci.org, go to SHRM.org, and make sure you're eligible. There's a phone number and there's a chart. Uh, of course, you can always contact me too, but I'm not supposed to speak on behalf of HRCI and SHRM. They would like to speak and say, yes, you're eligible or you're not. Secondly, this program is going to make you a better HR professional, hands down, no doubt about it. But I want you to be eligible to take the exam because the goal of this program is when you are finished, you're going to take the exam at uh, where HRCI recommends or where uh, SHRM recommends. So what I want you to be aware of is it's a 36 hour program, but we require, or I should say we highly recommend that you're gonna put in studying time. And my students will study on average 150 to 200 hours. So I have absolutely had individuals look at this program and say, I've got to make sure I am ready to commit because it is going to be studying an hour a day, you know, as well as preparing for the course and then uh, as well as weekend studying time. So it's a full cycle. And so I wanted to share that with you because I think that's an important component. This is taught live online using Zoom, both fall and spring. There is no in-person component with this. We've been running this for, oh my goodness, almost 25 years. It's probably more than 25 years. <laughs> I'm gonna say 25 years. Uh, and, with that said, it's $1,199. There is a 5% early bird discount. There is a discount if three or more from the same company wanted to register for it, you would get a 15% discount. And also we give a 15% discount to SHRM members. Um, and they have asked for it. We have a lot of um, SHRM uh, members 
wanting wanting to get this. By the way, we've, we've never given a 15% discount from SHRM for this program, so we're quite excited. The fee of $1,199 includes several textbooks that if you're local, you can pick up from me uh, at the Center City Building. If not, we'll mail them to you. And it will have uh, supplemental materials as well, flashcards, uh, sample exams, things of that nature. Ms. Erin Kwan is your instructor. She is an SPHR and a SHRM a senior certified professional and has been in HR uh, for 25 years. Uh, we're delighted to have her. And I threw in credit because uh, if you are a global professional in human resources, we have had individuals submit this for credit. Obviously you're already certified, but they have taken it uh, to earn a recertification credit. The fee of $1,199 does not include the actual exam. So I want you to be aware of this and I want you to uh, prepare. For HRCI, Exams for PHR are $495, that includes application fees. SPHRs are $595. And in order to uh, set up for a test, you can take the test year round. They weren't always like that, they are now. And when you take the test, they go through Pearson View. And what I wanted you to know about that is um, it's different from SHRM. So SHRM uses Prometric and they have two testing windows that you can take the test in. So they're not like HRCI where you can take the test anytime you want. You have to take the test in the spring, May 1st through July 15th or in the winter, December 1st through February 15th. And their fees are around $500 for the test. So I just thought I'd throw it out there. I know we're at our limit, but I wanted to ask you, I wanted to say one more thing. In order to take the test, these certification exams, up pre-COVID, up to COVID, all tests were done in testing centers in every region, and you um, had to do it in person. It took a long time for Pearson View and Prometric to come up to speed. But last May of 2020, both of them have an online option and it's tough. So this is an online proctoring and they do all kinds of things. So I gotta tell you, back last year, the president of both of Prometric and Pearson View shared what you would have to go through in order to do an online test. Now you can go right to hrci.org and you can click on you know, Pearson View and they've got videos. They could show you exactly what to expect. So it's fantastic. And they're gonna keep it. See, once they offered that option of online proctoring for the exam, they can never get rid of it. It is an option and you will have it for both. Prometric and Pearson View. So this was a full hour and uh, seven minutes. I thank you so much for your time. Um, I am going to stay on for questions. Tomorrow, um, we are going to be sending you the handouts again and a recording, as well as a, a, a survey about this info session. Um, I want to share that you can register for any of these courses by calling our registration center at 704-687-8900 or going right to our website, or you can contact me directly. There's my phone number as well as my email. And uh, especially if you go through this recording and you go through the handouts, you have more questions, feel free. Uh, but I wanted to at least just say thank you so much for attending and I hope it was helpful. And um, I'm gonna answer for a few minutes, a few questions, uh, but in case anybody has to leave, I just wanted to be aware of that. So let me go to chat. Michael, can you help me with that? 
Yes, we have a lot of questions going on. Just, just a few questions and then they can definitely email me, but. Well, what I wanted to tell everyone, if we don't get to your question, um, we will email you tomorrow um, and try to answer your, your questions. Um, that way, um, in case we've run out of time, uh, we will get to you tomorrow. Um, so there are um, some questions on when do classes start? Um, I, I suppose for the HR certificate as well as for the exam prep course. So the HR certificate, um, remember we sent you the schedule and we're gonna send it again tomorrow. So I have classes uh, for the HR certificate starting in October and it goes all the way through December. And then that's our fall semester. And then I have classes in um, the spring, starting from March all the way to uh, June. For the HR exam prep, oh, and by the way, learning and development is the same way. And the HR exam prep, uh, the fall semester starts in September and goes through to November. And the uh, spring session starts in February and goes through April. Um, the next theme that we have is regarding the pass rate um, for people who take the exam prep course oh, yeah. and they go on to take the exam. What is the pass rate? Yes, and I wish I can give you that uh, search, search, or stats, I should say. We're UNC Charlotte and we can't do any self-reporting. And what that means is people go through our program and they then self-report if they passed or failed because HRCI and SHRM do not ask for that. They don't ask, did you take an exam prep program at UNC Charlotte? Because then UNC Charlotte uh, would be very happy to report what HRCI uh, states and SHRM states. But I can tell you this, we are um, extremely high pass rate over national average. The national average, when you do your due diligence and you take a look, the national average, um, and it's always posted a year before, they always show you the year before, um, it's always around the 50 percentile of pass rates. You know, And we have always been for PHR in the high 90s and in the SPHRs in the 80s. And that's uh, due to several reasons, uh, if uh, people are um, eligible looking at that. So no, our, uh, you know, we, we have due diligence. We've been doing it uh, a quite a long time. Yes, Michael? The next set of questions um, is regarding what, um, well, what are the advantages of taking the HR certificate program before the HR exam prep course is one required before the other? Okay, so first of all, ideally, it would be, um, well, first of all, I don't have, depending on your experience, you may not even be eligible to do the uh, certification. So that question may be coming from someone who is eligible, and they can do both. Obviously, there's an expense to both, right? You have a uh, a program called the HR certificate where we really delve into the how-tos of HR. And you're gonna spend 70 hours on HR competencies. The exam prep is preparing you for the exam, not the how-tos. We are preparing you with test questions and going through the actual format of the exam. And so it's very different. If people had their way, they would do both. If they were eligible for both, they would go through the 70 hour program. And I have had thousands do it that way. They go through, they make sure that they go through all of the competencies and then they take the exam prep where they hone in only on the exam. You know, I have some people that have been experienced as comp and benefits people for 20 years, but they are not experienced in many other facets of HR. And so the HR certificate is going through all of those competencies in a different manner. 
So there's a great advantage, but not everyone can afford that. And so I have absolutely had people say, listen, I'm eligible to take the certification. The certification is going to make me very marketable. It's in every job description there is in HR. So if I'm eligible, I'm going to take it. And I'm going to study 200 hours and take that 36 hour and um, uh, exam prep and prepare and then take the exam and get it. Fantastic. And there's a many, many, many advantages of being certified. So when I asked that question on the second slide, so many people answered, that is my goal. That is my goal for HR. Absolutely, I see why. Uh, it is a true competitive contender for the masters uh, in HR because it tells the hiring HR manager exactly, exactly who you are. We know exactly what you went through when you passed that exam. Michael, why don't we, it's 7.15 and we could do one more. We have just more questions about when um, when do classes start? Um, let's see, one more. Um, a good question is, what type of payment plans do we offer for these programs? What what type of plans? What type of payment plans? Oh, payment plans. So that's why I shared with you as far as the. Uh, discounts are concerned. Any of these programs, you must have it paid in full before the first day of the program. The HR courses and the learning and development courses, you can uh, literally, if you're not being sponsored by your company and you're, you're, you're paying, um, the actual course, if you, if you can pay per class or you can pay several at a time, um, but they will expect payment in full before the first class. Uh, for the exam prep program, there is a deposit option, uh, but because it's getting really close to the start date of the fall, even if you put a deposit, the remaining balance will have to be paid before the first day. And as far as any more questions with schedules, we sent it to you today, but we're going to send it again tomorrow. Every schedule that I mentioned with every learning modality and when it's offered in and the dates and times. Thank you, everybody, so much. I really appreciate it. And we'll try to answer more questions. And for those of you that want to email me directly, feel free. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.